I, I almost feel a little bit ashamed because um, we have these great talks about the bottom of the pyramid and what we're doing actually is more at the top of the pyramid. But it's still similar and we still want the same thing. So I'm still going to give this talk anyway. Um, we are from a design collective in Holland called Better Future Factory. Laura is over there. Please wave a little bit. I'm Jonas. <coughs> But I was asked here to talk about the Perpetual Plastic Project. Um, but before I talk about the Perpetual Plastic Project, I want to go into why we are doing this. So the reasons behind this project. As you all know, maybe, um, there's a lot of plastic in the world, a lot of waste in the world. And 10% of all the waste is plastic. Um, most of it ends up in landfills, in rivers, in uh, trees, in Morocco, wherever, and eventually it ends up in the sea, in the plastic soup, as it's called. Um, animals think this is food, so they eat it, they die, because they cannot di digest anything. Um, <coughs> this is a really big problem, and 40% of all these plastics are packaging materials. So this is a huge, huge, you cannot put this anywhere, it's, it's huge. The bigger problem is that the amount of plastic uh, is increasing. So the amount of plastic that's generated each year is increasing every year. <coughs> but the recovery of it uh, stays at the same level, so about 10% at currently. <coughs> um, it's not working on a global scale to recover all these plastics. So what we are suggesting is to put it into a local, uh, local scale. So on village level, on, on a festival level. This is where I want to make the link to a festival. Um, <clears throat> a festival basically is a big city that's being built up in a few days. And people are coming, a lot of people are coming there, make a lot of waste and a lot of fun, and then just leave. Uh, it's similar to, uh, to a small city. Um, <clears throat> in Holland, for instance, uh, average household generates about 3,000 to 4,000 kilograms of uh, material and plastic waste each year, which is a lot. Um, <clears throat> and really, we don't really do anything with that at the moment. <clears throat> so, um, but the plastic itself, the material itself, it is very valuable. Um, <clears throat> if you would change, uh, if you use the same, if you would demand the same properties of plastics to another material, use different materials for packaging, for instance, um, it would requi require two times more energy to make, and uh, it would become 3.5 times more heavy if you use different materials for the same amount of properties. So plastic in itself is a very valuable material and we, if we put it back to the original building blocks, the polymers, like we've been talking about all day, uh, I guess, <coughs> um, we can make anything we want. So we make a product, bring it back to the original building blocks, make something else out of it, do that all the time. And what we then get is a circular economy. That is what we are actually trying to accomplish here and what we are promoting. Um, I want to take a step back. <coughs> this chair is made from, uh, from old wood that you can just find in the street or in some house that's been burned down. Um, and I reckon to make this and material costs, it, is, it costs about 10 euros because you just need some nails and some polish and some sanding paper. You need some time to do it, but still, to make this would cost about 10 euros. What I want to ask you is how much do you think this sells for in the shop? Or rather still, I want to ask a few of you how much you would pay for this chair. I want to start with you. How much I would pay for this? Yeah. It's a nice chair, man. <laughs> without the pillows. No, without the pillows. The, the pillows you won't get with it. 
Be okay, no, yeah, that's good. It has no value to you. Uh, somebody else? 500 euros. Yeah. 500 euros. <laughs> somebody else? <laughs> 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 that's actually what it costs. It costs 2,000 euros in the shop in Holland. 2,000 euros. My point is, it's not about recycling, it's not about upcycling. It's not about however you call it, but it's about creating value. So it's about what people experience or uh, have experienced value for their product eventually. It's, it's different in every culture, different in every uh, region of the world, but still it's about what people experience as value. <clears throat> and that's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to accomplish. We create jewelry from junk. <clears throat> How do we do this? We made this, well, very strange factory, basically, <coughs> uh, which is in a circle. Um, we use the old plastic waste, the, the cups, as input material, and eventually you get some product out of it. We did rings before, we do everything, but on local value, so a different festival has different uh, printed objects. Um, but I think I can best explain it through the movie that has been made. And I hope the sound is not on because the music is terrible. Yeah. <coughs> oh, let's just press the... Oh, you have a link? I think it just... Yeah, if you just press it? Yes. All right. <coughs> can you put it full screen? Okay, the music is on. Uh, okay, is it okay? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay, put the music on then. <laughs> you see here the basic steps of the machine. This is the cleaning part. The second one is the shredding part. We've been discussing this uh, before. But it's all interactive. People do it themselves um, at the local festivals. machine. The shredded pieces go in there, they go th with a kind of drill, push it to the end, you get wires like this, <clears throat> and eventually that goes into 3D additive manufacturing 3D printer. And there's the, the ring that spreads the love on the local festival. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, what, it, what we're trying to say here is that uh, a circular economy is possible right now on local scale. Thank you. Um, and if you put some LED lighting into your machine, people find it very, very awesome. <laughs> <coughs> um, <clears throat> but it's about awareness, it's about interactivity, it's about the people that are using the machines. And uh, understanding this, the small process that's going on. So your valueless waste is becoming something that you want to take home, and you want to uh, show your friends, and that's the value that it's all about. But we're not done. Um, we want to develop this machine further, we want to make this more autonomous, we want to pay, place it in more places, in more festivals. We need uh, 3D printing software uh, maniacs, we need uh, 3D, 3D printer uh, people who are our partnerships. And that's basically what we, are, what we are as Better Future Factory, as a design company. We are in the middle of this whole partnership. Uh, we are just connecting the dots and together um, we are making this possible at the moment. <coughs> so the first step, right now we are making uh, rings out of old Coca-Cola cups. The second step would be to get autonomous machines into different parts of the world 
<clears throat> in offices, in gyms, wherever, where the plastic waste is immediately recycled. <clears throat> but the eventual goal is to clear out the oceans, to use that, that waste as input material for our machines and make something out of it that people would love. <clears throat> so we are here at the very beginning. We want to end up here and we need all of you with your brilliant minds to join us in this kind of circular revolution. You can find us online, so please do. Thank you. <laughs>
you uh, the whole project have been working here for a day or two days how much does it cost we have to think about that because we have never done that before we just rent a car right now and you go to a festival <laughs> and um, to and go to Italy it's a bit more difficult yeah. I think but still, it's possible. It's still, still possible. first prototype, so yeah. the problem is it's IKEA, so it's sort <laughs> of modular, but we have to build the whole closet, like everything, and it takes us almost two or three hours, and then bringing it back. So it's not really that easy to bring it everywhere now, but the second step is to make it sort of in cases or with views that we can just yeah. put it on the spot and then people can use it. You have something modular, no? Yeah. Yeah, 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 like yeah but as this modular. was an experiment, yeah. as this was an experiment, yeah. we just started out with the things that we yeah. Yeah, had Local around us. You in some way, you are yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. We first wanted to <laughs> test, like, the, to show the, yeah, the proof of concept, and then yeah, we, uh, to play yeah. some. Uh, oh yeah, that's uh, we we need some more pictures of beautiful places. Yeah. I can figure out to make uh, an extruder. Like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Is there problems drying the plastic before extruding it? Because with the plastic that you buy in the filament, you have to keep it tightly closed so no it doesn't get damp or. No, I not really. <laughs> yeah, but did you also see the drying tower? I see that there is some kind of a hair blower. And that's yeah. yeah, like that's people enough. watch it like manually, and then we have this big fan and a sort of tower, and then the yeah, stuff are circulating there. But yeah, but don't think the whole uh, filament yeah. that we get out of it is completely uh, really? like we need it to be. We just cut out the pieces that are not. <laughs> Suitable for printing. You don't create this like this. At this moment, though. Meter, like <laughs> two meters are okay, and then you have to cut some yeah. bad pieces out of it. Or some Especially when kids yeah. are like this, yeah. extruding. Yeah. You need it piece by piece. Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. Unfortunately. At, at the moment, yes. Yeah. Could I just ask you what, what did you study? You know, in order to. Ah, yeah. We're engineers. engineers. Yeah. Engineering. So it's sort of mechanical engineering, but then more product focused. Currently, you have one, one set of this machine. Yeah, yeah. it's the only. Pay in the local, in the no. No. no, we get paid by the yeah. by the festival organization. Just we want them to give their cups, yeah. so we are actually recycling their cups and not yeah. some uh, yeah input like bought material. Uh, what does what does people is, is willing to to ask you is if uh, you are available for coming and teaching local mm -hmm. people how to build such a machine yes. and. Yeah. It's open source. Yeah. 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 We. Sh I think we should talk about that later on. Yeah. I think that's the only. We don't uh, have really proper documentation because no. we were just doing it. You are the documentation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's here. That's true. We cannot just take a no. We don't have it on paper. <laughs> but we're open source, but still, it's like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it is very easy. Yeah. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. I like very much the idea of putting these things on the, um, on the gym. Yeah. Because people drink water. All the time. And also it's... Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's like a crank, yeah. You can put it on hard and on yeah. the... Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It's a big It's that. Now excellent. How many glasses does it take to make a ring then? One. Like, yeah. One huh? If you just look at the amount of material in a cup and then amount of material in a ring, maybe even less than one. Yeah, it's, it's it weighs the same. Yeah. Or insulation, like the plastic goes everywhere, so it's not really <laughs> that you get one cup from a ring, but if you make it really sufficient. But for example, setting a, a machine like yours in a place such an international like ICDP, <laughs> <laughs> would be very good because then, you know, people will go through the experience and will yeah. go back into their yeah. Yeah, yeah, you finish your coffee, you can immediately wash it yourself, shred it, yeah. and then somebody else can Yeah, we're currently it. talking with the TU yeah. Delft, the Technical University of Delft, where we also come from. Okay. Uh, they're also interested in putting something like this yeah. in the university. Yes. But it's all, it's a, like an ongoing process. We we don't know where it ends. <laughs> we just started it, I think. <laughs> yeah. You should not produce uh, glasses, because if you take a glass... You can produce another glass. You can make a bigger one, 
bigger one. Yeah, or a personal <laughs> one. Or with some one with your own face on it, like for real. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. Also, for educational purpose, very important. Yeah. Yeah, we also are like cooperating with Doodle uh, 3D, and that's uh, then kids can make a drawing on an iPad, and there are two buttons, extrude and sort of twist, and then with one print, they can actually model their own thing. So then a kid can draw a nice uh, dinosaur or whatever and print it in 3D. <coughs> and yeah. then they're even more happy than with the yeah. bring that V models. Yeah. Yeah, that's really modern. There's, um, if you've not come across them already, there's an, an organization um, called Hackademia. Um, yeah, I think they're, I know. They're, so Hackademia is, an, they're, um, they're, I think they're based in Berlin, and they, they, they're a maker organization that teaches young people kind of maker skills. So they, okay. do, they do work with 3D printing and, and recycling, and they run little workshops, so they'll have a weekend workshop in Paris or a weekend workshop in Bucharest where kids can come in and interact with different machines and things. Yeah. They would be a good organisation to contact because yeah. they've got the infrastructure to roll these. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. This is on tape, so we don't have to write it down, right? No. You can also apply for his new... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the new 100,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Laura will be here all yeah. all seminar. I'll be leaving today, so that's just as you know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.